Hello, today we are going to talk about all that I know about how to program for the KD calculator application named KCalc. So KCalc is a KD application, is a cute widgets application. This thing, KCalc. Okay, and uh, it seems like a normal, simple, simplest possible pocket calculator, but it's way more complicated than that because it has this settings switcher. So it knows science mode, it degrees and radians and powers and cubic and there's a statistic mode and then numeral system hexadecimal octal shift binary operators okay so people normally when they think about the kd calculator they always think of this version so settings simple mode but there are more advanced possibilities to KCalc. Okay. So one of the home pages of KCalc is this thing, which is https colon slash slash apps.kd.org slash KCalc. Most KD applications have a page like this. So apps.kd.org slash the name of the application. Uh, as project website we have we have nothing so it says it's utils.k.org slash project slash kcalc but that um, resolves back to apps.kd.org slash kcalc okay let's look at the gentle package Where is the resi recipe? So KD calculator apps.k.org slash kcalc GPL version two runs on md64 depends on these two important libraries so kcalc is in fact a, uh, a wrapper over two gnu libraries mpfr and gmp let's look at these two things gmp so it's called gnu MPFR, Multiple Precision Arithmetic Library, GMP, gmplib.org. So arbitrary precision arithmetic, signed integers, rational numbers, floating point numbers, unlimited precision if enough RAM is available. Okay, it's exposed as C functions, C programming language functions and wrappers for other libraries or other programming languages. MPZ init mpz mul which is probably the multiplication i'm guessing so a very large integer times a very large integer x is a mpz underscore t 
and y is an mpz underscore t, so the left operand is uh, mpz underscore t. Uh, this is the right operand mpz underscore t, the type. And then when we do multiplication, the result is also of type mpz underscore t. Okay, so it prints, print f's, x times y equals a huge result. mpz class. Okay, so that's the first one. So this was the first one, GMP, and then MPFR. Another GNU library, multiple precision floating point reliable library. Multiple precision floating point reliable library, MPFR. So it's based on GMP. Correct rounding. Signed zeros, infinite, not a number. Okay, so kcalc seems to be a simple um, pocket calculator. this thing, but in fact it's a GUI wrapper over GNU MPFR library and uh, GMP library, GNU multiple precision arithmetic library. So it's a, in fact a GUI wrapper using Qt widgets over two GNU libraries. Okay. What else? Browse the source code gives us the source code repository. So as all KD projects, they are, there is a git repository on https colon slash slash invent.kd.org slash utilities slash kcalc in this case. This is the history. Okay. So it's similar to most of the KD Git repositories in the sense that it has a Git ignore file, which is kind of in the process of being standardized for the KD Git repositories. Then there's a cmakelist.txt file, which is the entry point of the uh, project, which is um, similar to a dot slash configure in uh, the GNU tools world or similar to a .sln file for Visual Studio. So in here it says that the minimum version of CMake required is 3.16, that the version is 22.11.70, that the minimum Qt version required in order to compile is 5.15.2. The minimum KD Frameworks version 5 required is 5.90. It uses ECM, extra CMake modules from KD. It uh, takes some things from ECM, KD install directories, KD compiler settings, ECM markets test. Then we have the project in here. So it says project, this is the 
identifier of this entire CMake Git repository. So it says that the project name is kcalc and the version is this concatenation. So 22.11.70, this thing, which is defined in here. Okay, executables says add executable kcalc. So there is an executable a binary file that if you run, it will show the main graphical user interface of the application, which is called kcalc, which kcalc depends on the following uh, um, source files, so translation units and not only. Okay, it depends on um, KDE of the specified um, version. So this thing, Qt major version, Qt minor version, where are these defined? I don't know. And it says that the following components packages from Qt are mandatory, so core and widgets, because it's a Qt widgets application, not a Qt quick Qt QML application. And from the similarly from the KD frameworks version 5, it requires K core addons, K crash, K config, K config widgets, K GUI addons, K internationalization, K notification, K XML GUI. Optional, we have tools to generate documentation. It uh, tries to find the first GNU library, GMP. Then it tries to find the second GNU library, MPFR. Both are required. Then it says look inside of the subdirectory K number. Conditionally install icons for Linux. Okay, I don't know what this thing does. Target link library. So this I'm going to guess is the minus L parameter to the G++ command line. P list is Mac OS only thing. Make install will install kcalc. We'll also install um, the desktop file, the updata.xml file. Okay, global accelerator, maybe for the, um, where is it? For this button, for the, um, some uh, keyboards have a key specialized for starting the, cal the calculator. Okay, this is for translations. CLANG format. So I'm guessing all of the changes which are present in a git commit will be checked with CLANG format. Okay, let's see how we build this thing. So we start a terminal and we have set up, uh, already set up KDSRC minus build, so KDSRC minus build and the name of the project, kcalc, like this. So it will build 77 repos Git repositories, which are KD Frameworks version 5. And then after those are done, it will build uh, kcalc, the application. Not all of the 
KD frameworks are required for KD for KCalc to be built or to run, but their um, use as dependencies nonetheless. That's the way KD SRC minus build does the things sometimes. Okay. And since I have built Qt5 using KDSRC minus build, it's only it's also going to build some uh, libraries which depend on Qt, such as this GPGME. Lib GPG error. Okay. So let's look side by side at the dependencies. So it declares that it depends on uh, kcrash. So kcrash is this thing. It depends on kcore add-ons. That's at the very start. This thing, the second git, kd git repository to get built. Then kd kconfig, this thing. kconfig widgets. I don't know what, what uh, that was. This thing, kconfig widget, kgui add-ons, this thing, kgui add-ons, k internationalization, this thing, k notifications. This thing and KXML GUI, which is which? This thing, KXML GUI, it also builds book, K bookmarks, etc all of the KD frameworks, most of the KD frameworks, including Kirigami, which we certainly don't use. Okay, it also builds Poplar. K Wayland, K Text Editor. Most of the frameworks, because why not? Okay, and after 77 git repositories from the frameworks GitLab group have built. Now from the uh, GitLab group utilities, it builds kcalc. So this is the utilities uh, GitLab group from https colon slash slash invent.kit.org slash utilities and then kcalc. So it builds successfully. Now let's run it. So there's a possibility of running it with KDSRC run, kcalc. Okay, so this is kcalc. How can we see that it's different from the one installed from the packages on my Kubuntu 2204 machine? So this one from um, Ubuntu 22.04 is uh, KD Frameworks 5 version 5.92 and uh, this one built from scratch from the git master branch is uh, using KD Frameworks version 5, 5.100 and also the Qt version is different. I've built 5.15.6 Qt version from KDSRC whereas um, Ubuntu 22.04 has Qt 5.15.3. Okay, and we can also use LSO to look at the thing. Okay, so we see that it's running the binary from my home directory slash kd slash usr slash bin, which is the default install directory, which 
is specified in the configurations of KDSRC minus build. So all of the non cute non KD libraries are taken from slash USR, such as libdeflate, and all of the cute and KD things are taken from tilde slash KD slash USR, such as KF5 Windows System X11 plugin. Okay. Fonts also from slash. Radeon driver. The breeze style from tilde slash KD slash USR slash. Okay, so again, whatever is big, low, uh, cute is from slash USR. Whatever is cute or above is uh, from tilde slash KD slash USR. Okay. So we've successfully built the software. Let's now look at the how KDSRC minus build does its thing. So where are you? So This is my configuration file for KDSRC minus build. Default, 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 default. I have built my own Qt. This is not default. I'm setting the CMake build configuration debug in order because I want to do actually debug the build executables. Many CPU cores. Defaults. I have changed top on failure to be false because uh, this, uh, when I went KDSRC minus build space kcalc, it also built k-image formats, which is not really necessary. So sometimes KDSRC minus build will build some modules which are not ex necessary. So the end result of kcalc will be built correctly, but some modules will fail. So that's why I went with stop on failure force. Directory layout in event, which means that the, um, GitLab groups are used. So this utility is, is really important. Okay, these are defaults and this is default, this is default, this is where I'm saying that all of the libraries that are not KDE but depend on Qt should be rebuilt from scratch because I have my own uh, compiled using KDSRC minus build Qt5. Okay, next, let's look at the source code. So the source code is in tilde slash kd slash src and then the, the uh, GitLab group. So in our case, utilities and kcalc. This is the source code. Let's look at it with Visual Studio Code. Okay, so one directory, the entry point, which is the cmakelist.txt file, then straight in the git work direc directory, so in the top directory, there's the um, entry points, so kcalc.cpp, with the main function. Where are you? So this is the main function. So being an executable, it has a C programming language style exported entry point, which is this main function, which receives as parameters the number, the number of command line parameters and uh, the list of uh, command line parameters and will return a exit status, zero meaning success, non-zero meaning error. Okay. Then there's uh, UI files, which are files um, 
that specify the user interface for Qt frameworks. This will be consumed by the UI compiler UIC. Okay. Then there's a gitlab-ci.yml file which says which usually says I don't know each week let's build this git repo or after every commit let's build this git repo or after every commit let's do a lint or something okay we looked at the git ignore clang format so uh, clang format is mandatory because we can see it in here It says uh, KD configure git pre-commit hook, checks CLANG format, and the specification is this thing. So don't use tabs, use spaces for maximum 160 characters per line, etc., etc., etc. Okay, what's CLANG format? I don't know. What's CLANG format? set of tools that are built on top of lib format lib format being what is a library that implements automatic source code formatting based on clang so clang is a uh, clang plus llvm is a compiler technology framework so contains libraries uh, contains C++ compiler CLang++, a C compiler CLang, uh, CLang tidy, uh, CLang format, LLVM intermediate representation, front end compiler, back end compiler, etc. Okay, and one of these technologies is used for um, seeing if the source code is correct, looks okay, is correctly formatted, and also for applying the uh, suggested formats to the source code. So we can automatically format um, either the entire source code or just uh, several lines from the source code. So in here, that's what we do, just several lines. So we pre-commit hook. Okay. The executable is named clang minus format. Clang. Okay. Next. So let's look at the source code in a better way by um, using the ID Qt Creator. And before we do that, let's look at the build directory. So um, KDSRC has two, three directories. This is the directory where it grid cloned. the repository kcalc and the history looks like this so we run uh, the branch local branch master remote branch master okay we can do all of the git things like git remote minus v uh, git patch git rebase Origin master. Okay, current branch master is up to date. This is the directory where kdsrc minus build has git cloned kcalc. So tilde slash kd slash src slash it is slash kcalc. Then there's the directory where kdsrc minus build installs. So make install will put files into tilde slash kd slash usr in here. So kcalc will be in here, this thing. 
Okay, I can double click on it and it will start the application. Okay. Then there's um, include, so for all of the KD frameworks version 5, there's H files, include files that are needed in order for other projects to use the KD frameworks version 5 libraries. There's a ton of SO files. There's um, CMake files, which are uh, used by CMakeLists.txt in order to compile source code. Okay. What else? There's a share. Icons. I color. Thirty two apps. Okay. So the things that you usually see in slash USR or in slash USR slash local now are available in tilde slash KDA slash USR for the um, reposit Git repositories that are built using uh, KDS RC minus build. Okay. And the third directory is tilde slash KDA slash build which is the directory where CMake does its things, where it creates intermediate files, make files, um, build artifacts, um, where it runs the preprocessors, the um, code generator tools, etc. So the same uh, layout, tilde slash kd slash build, utilities, which is the uh, GitLab uh, group, and then kcalc, which is the name of the git repository so in here we have the make file so we've instructed kdsrc to use cmake and cmake is instructed to use to create gnu make files so it's not using ninja it's using gnu make files this make file is auto generated by cmake has a million targets. The most important are nothing so make and uh, make install fast. Install fast is this one. Okay. And since this is the directory where CMake did these things, we can load in Qt Creator the project, so the source code, the Git repository, and then say, look at this directory where CMake did these things and import from there the CMake settings. So let's start the ID, Qt Creator. We go File, Open File or Project, we put the directory where the git clone was done for kcalc and we select in there cmakelist.txt okay then we go manage kits we remove this temporary thing we keep just desktop and then we say import existing build and we give it a directory where cmake did these things so tilde slash kd slash build utilities kcalc just the directory, enter. And now it has run CMake in a very similar way because we're uh, running uh, CMake with a very special command line parameter. So KDSRC minus build tells it that uh, it should run CMake from uh, Ubuntu packages or from slash USR, the source directory directory where uh, kcalc was git clone is this one. The directory where CMake should do its things is slash kd slash build slash utility slash kcalc. And uh, uh, it tells it where to find the KD frameworks and the Qt 
another library so it should first look for them in tilde slash kd slash usr not in slash usr okay and it creates a new build configuration which is called debug2 which is correct and in here we can see the results of the run of CMake. So CMake has, um, is not using KF5OUT, so KAUTH library SO file from slash USR, but from tilde slash KD slash USR slash lib slash x86 underscore 64 minus Linux minus GNU slash CMake slash KF5AUT. So we know that now inside of Qt Creator, which is the ID integrated development environment, kcalc the git repository is configured the same way that kdsrc minus build is configuring it. So it will build correctly, it will install correctly, it will run correctly, and it will be debugged correctly. Okay. So the configure step went okay. Now we're going to run uh, make. So the build button. It says compiler output. So I'm not sure why it went so fast. Probably because it was already built. So make does a build, not a rebuild. So it only builds the edited files from the previous build. Okay, and then we have this setting, which is switch to projects mode control 5. Qt 5.15.6 system and not build but run. In here we select the executable or test or what's the entry point that's going to run when we press the button run control R or the button start debugging of startup project. So we have that we can choose between kcalc and k number test. Why is there the option key number test? I don't know. Let's see. Because in um, the directory key number, there's a directory tests. In there, there's a file cmakelist.txt, which is included by the top level cmakelist.txt file. And where it says uh, KD extra CMA modules ECM, add test uh, K number test.cpp, link the library K number so the SO file, and the name of the uh, resulting executable should be K number test. Okay, so we can select that if we want. Okay. And now we can see a summary. So it says project calc. We're using the Qt from my home directory, not the Qt from slash USR. Build configuration debug too. So that's the one we created specially when we imported the um, build directory. So this directory. And um, it will run k number test. So let's run it. The button run control plus R. So this is the output. So it's a pretty fast test, but probably not a unit test. So it's running this executable. Let's see if this executable exists. ls minus l control shift v so it's a executable yes it has the x bit set okay let's run it control shift v enter okay so tests c++ tests in order to be able to be run so to have an entry point they're not run with a special executable like in um, ms test in c sharp .NET framework but 
are compiled into an executable and then that executable is run at the command line and uh, we look at the std out stdr of the and exit status of the this executable so it says success okay how do we look at the exit status So this thing, dollar sign question mark. If it returns zero, then the previous executable that has run, which is this one, has exited successfully, which it did. Okay. What's next? we can debug this uh, test key number test let's find the source code for the key number test uh, or the entry point and we're going to put in the source code in the entry point a breakpoint so at key number test let's look in visual studio code so it says there's a file which is called key number test.cpp which is in this directory key call key number tests key number test.cpp so let's go there okay calc okay so this is the the view as um, cmake targets so there's a kcalc um, top level cmake list.txt file which has a target key number we have seen it it's executable key number uh what is it executable key calc this thing and then it uh, needs to include key number and inside of key number there's a test uh, directory and in there there's a cmake list.txt file and then there's another cmake target which is called key number test which is also an executable okay and you look at its source files that's just one source file so just one translation unit might contain a ton of header files of include files but there's just one cpp file just one c++ uh, translation unit so let's go in there and uh, put some breakpoints in here How does it know what to run? I don't know. Key number, Q string, CSTD, CSTD lib, IO stream limits. Does it have a main? Yes, it does have a main. So let's put a breakpoint in here. From what I see, it doesn't uh, use any test framework so it's a just a plain text executable command line executable it has its own assert function doesn't use any um, c++ or Qt testing frameworks or kd testing frameworks so x unit frameworks for instance Okay, we've put a breakpoint in the main and now we can debug we press the start the debugging of the startup project button if we're lucky the debugger works okay so we have too many breakpoints let's clean them up so it seems to remember very old breakpoints like for from one month ago yes put a new breakpoint and then stop the debugging okay we'll start the debugging again so there's functions without any parameters free functions c plus plus free functions f11 to step into so the shortcuts are step into f11 step out shift f11 f5 continue to the next breakpoint uh, f10 to step to the next line and that's it 
So it writes the com acid out something. Where is the output? I don't know. Constants. Where does it say constants? You didn't flush it or something. I don't know. F um, ten. So what does it do? It always um, calls the assert function, which is check type. So let's go F eleven to see what it, this thing does. K number integer. So that's a thing which is called K number integer, which smells like a type that's defined inside of Kcalc. So I'm guessing this is a wrapper over the um, type. So the both of the two libraries from GNU, MPFR and GMP used their own type for the X and Y left and right um, operand. So I'm guessing key number integer and key number and key number float etc are wrappers over um, those C types from the two GNU libraries. So let's see what key number does. Yeah, so not uh, available, or this was a not available number. There were two infinities. There's an even a PI. The PI number. Okay. Constructors, destructor, constructors, constructors, more constructors. math operators, bitwise operators, converters, math functions, trigonometry functions, so log 10, what does log 10 do? What is log 10? You give it a number, which is this, which is z, and then you go z dot value is z dot value log ten, which what is log ten? Why doesn't it go there? What is z value? So z value is a pointer to k number base. which has a lock to virtual function which might be float lock 10 integer lock 10 or float lock 10 let's look at uh, integer lock 10 so integer lock 10 what does it do k number float what does this thing do? And then it deletes this. Why would you delete this? Isn't is it even possible to delete this? Lock ten. And this is the float one. Okay. And finally, the float um, type of k number, uh, the function, the method long 10, uses MPFR log 10, which is uh, 
slash usr slash include slash mpfr.h so this is a c not a c plus plus exported function which uh, expects three parameters which i don't know what they represent i'm guessing there's um, i don't know let's look at the math wiki log 10 logarithm let's look at logarithm so logarithm with base 10 is called the common logarithm the Kadic decimal algorithm logarithm Brixian logarithm standard logarithm logarithmus decimalis log of 10 of x or log of x okay and what does it do Mantisa, what is that? I don't know, so log of 10 has just one parameter, right? The x and just one return, which is result. So I'm guessing one of these is the result or maybe these two. And this is the parameter. Okay, let's close this control W. And uh, it just uh, says that it should wrap this uh, C exported function using this C++ template. So three parameters, and then it calls f, which is the C exported function, with uh, those those what I, I don't know what what this thing really does. I know how to find out though. That's enough for me. I can uh, compile this thing and then look at the generated uh, LLVM IR, so Intermediate Representation Language. I can uh, decompile this thing use, using uh, Ghidra, the C++ decompiler, and it's going to show me non-template things, so I know what's happening in there. Just looking at the x86 assembler is not going to be good enough. Okay, Control W, Control W to close the current tab. Okay, so that's the way it wraps the. So there's a C exported function from the GMP library. It wraps that thing in a C template. And that thing it um, is then um, wrapped into a key number of type float, and then the uh, method, so log ten in our case, and then when it uses key number of type int, in fact it calls key number of type float. So there's um, special specializations of the key number class of this key number integer key number error key number fraction key number float and the key number base okay that's about it f10 f11 f11 so F11 jumps all over the place. Uh, the most important thing that 
I sometimes want and sometimes don't want is sometimes I want to step inside of the cute libraries and sometimes I don't want to step into the cute library. So in this case, it stepped into a totally seemingly random place in the cute library. So it's in cute core, cute string literal dot h. So most of the times I don't want to step into the evaluation of the parameters of the function. I want to just step into the body of the code function. So for that, I have the stack. Let's go back. So when I went F11 on this line, I didn't want to step into this and into this and into whatever. I want to step into this method. So I'll have to just put a breakpoint in here and go debug continue. So F5, it steps un until it finds the next uh, breakpoint and there it stops. So let's evaluate. It's a K number one. It's a one and it's a one. So desired is probably the expected and test arg is probably the actual in uh, X unit speak. And uh, this is probably the, I don't know, the te uh, test name. Let's look. Yeah, the test name to such that when an error occurs, we know where the error was in which uh, function and on which test case test num test name. Okay. So it pays it uh, writes the standard output details about the test. I'm pressing F10 and it doesn't go to line 59, 69, it keeps going back to line 66 because it evaluates a ton of parameters in here and a ton of less than less than operators. Okay. And then if uh, the test is successful, it writes okay. Otherwise, if the test is failed, it doesn't write to standard error, it still writes to standard output, or just a string failed. And then it um, exits with an exit status of non zero. STD exit. Which, what it, does it do? C language exit. terminates the calling process immediately. So the entire process, the command line process will stop. And um, the exit status that's available using echo dollar sign question mark is going to be what we pass as parameter to the exit function. So one in our case. When you don't know what uh, exit status to have, one is the golden one. If it's an error, put a one in there and it should be okay. Okay. So we can step into anything. We can step into the source code of QPrintable to, to local 8-bit to convert to local 8-bit to anything. Or inside of the, this thing. How do we step there? Yeah, in here. So we have um, slash USR slash include slash C plus plus slash eleven slash O stream. So the standard C plus plus header O stream. And the operator less than less than for basic O streams. So let's see if it goes there. F5, 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 no. It doesn't use that overload. Okay. Let's finish with exit code zero. Let's delete all of the breakpoints. So escape, escape. 
Garage the breakpoints. Let's so we have an executable that's built using CMake, which is called key number test, this one. And then we have another executable which is um, called kcalc, which is built using these files. So there's a source file with the exact same name, kcalc.cpp, where we have a main function. We put a breakpoint in here. We change the switch to projects mode control 5, build and run, run, and then run configuration kcalc. We build once, no need, but why not? And then we start debugging. We look at the breakpoints. We go right click, delete all breakpoints. Yes, put a breakpoint in here. Stop. Hopefully I'm not messing things up by moving too fast. And then I started the debugging again. So start the debugging with um, F5. Right. I know. Okay, so we're inside the main function of the executable. The executable was called with zero parameters. So just one, the command line contains just one thing, which is the name of the executable. And argv has just one item which is the name of the, the full name of the executable slash home slash nmarusp slash kd slash build slash utility slash kcalc slash bin slash kcalc so which is it doesn't run make install and then starts the debugging the debugger it runs just make so make will put things into slash kd tilde slash kd slash build not into tilde slash kd slash usr for that make install needs to be run so make install is not run it's run only make and then it starts the debugger okay let's look at the source code in here so q application is used for command line parsing for the main loop for gui cute uh, widgets applications it also parses the command line then there's um, k internationalization so we're saying that all of the strings that are shown on the graphical user interface will be translated from english to some other language but we'll take the translation the, the strings the translated strings for the given language and for the given um, english string but for the prod for the application kcalc so it will not look at the translations of another application such as kate it will look at the translations of the current application which is kcalc so this is the set application domain i'm not sure why i don't okay let's go f11 to see if we can look at the source code of the set application of, of uh, method f11 so the debugger is able to navigate into .cpp files from outside of the kcalc current git project but otherwise we can't navigate to cpp files so whenever we want to see the real implementation of a method we'll need to put a breakpoint before the application is the um, function is called run with the debugger to that point and then f11 to step into and sometimes you'll need to press f11 like a million times because these uh, parameters will be evaluated first before the debugger actually reaches the open curly bracket bracket of the cpp source code file of that uh, function that we care about Okay, so there's a static KLSP thing, which is a free function, or not. This is a parenthesis operator, I didn't really know that such a thing exists. 
operated pair of operator pair of parentheses. Okay. Eleven. So static KLSP is in fact a macro definition, so Q global static, which does Q global static with arcs, which does namespace namespace. What this thing is QQGS, then the name, which is the second parameter of the two. Control C, Control V, F10. So many of the KD projects have this thing where a class has its um, private member variables encapsulated in another object, which is called something with private. So there's private statics or something with private. And there's a type for that thing, which is which ends with private. So there's a class k localized string, but behind it there's a d, which is a member variable, which is of type k localized string private. So k localized string is a type that has a type which has the exact same name, so k localized string, but ends with private, capitalized like this, uppercase P and R uh, I V A T E lowercase. And the constructor, what it does, it just takes all of its parameters and puts it puts them inside of the private um, member variable. Okay. So the private is also a class. K localized string is also a class. Print class K localized string private. Okay, so k localized string is a class and has behind it a class called k localized string private. Okay, and a member. So k localized string has a member called D, which is private and of type k localized string private. At the end of the class definition, usually. These are doc strings. Probably doxygen. Where is the D? How do I select? Enst. So D in this file, current file, case sensitive whole words only search. This thing. So the last, very last thing before the declaration of the class ends, so before the end curly bracket of the class definition there's private things so there's a private um, member variable of type uh, std unique ptr so pointer k localized string private const t and there's a private constructor okay 
So KLocalize string has constructors, destructors, methods, and just one field. One backing store, one member variable, which is called D and is of type KLocalize string private. Whenever you want to add a new member variable to KLocalize string, you don't add it to KLocalize string, you add it to KLocalize string private, and then you pass it uh, via the two constructors of KLocalize string private and KLocalize string. And the two classes are friends. which is a way of encapsulating to make sure that the private data is not exposed through the class, which is extremely public because it's a API ABI exported C++ symbol uh, from the K internationalization KD frameworks 5 SO file. So it's a really big deal. You're not messing around with the API ABI compatibility of an, such an important symbol. Okay, so where are we now? We're inside the debugger because uh, it says debugger GDB4K calc. We have a call stack, we can go there. We have this element in the call stack, so this uh, C macro expands to a bunch of C source code and then that source code where are you? So there's two namespaces, there's a static Q global static, whatever that is. There's a type def, a Q basic atomic int, Q global static internal which is a ton of structs, two structs. Okay. So there's a way of uh, how uh, the C preprocessor works. So this is a define whenever it's encountered in a translation unit. It's actually expanded to this, and this is another define, and it's expanded to something else. So the source code that we see in the Git repository is converted to other, to an intermediate uh, set of C++ files, and only that is then compiled. So the G++ GCC compiler has a command line switch where you can tell it um, don't compile the source code, but just preprocess all of the C macros and uh, show me the resulting C++ intermediate C++ files. So by doing such a thing, we could uh, see exactly what this uh, macro in a macro in a macro actually expands to, but I can see already several structs in here. That's why the breakpoints break there. Okay. So let's get back to the main function. So again, this is for internationalization. It says take the strings from this application from kcalc. Then uh, there's a um, migration from uh, KD4 to KD5, which uh, migrates the settings. So kcalc rc, kcalc ui dot rc. Okay, let's ignore this. This, def, this um, if def says that whenever we release a KD based on Qt6, uh, which is KD frameworks version 6, this migration from KD4 to KD5 will not be available and will not be performed. Okay, so it says if Qt version is 5, not 6. Less than 6. Okay, crash, probably the crash handler. Uh, key about data does 
two things. One is the this help about kcalc um, UI. So there's KD calculator, this thing. And copyright F1 and burned. Okay, and um, the home page, etc., etc., components and authors. But also the command line uh, parameter minus minus version. Um, and there was another one. Okay. Escape, escape to close the tool views. Command line parser. So similar to GNU get opt, it parses um, command lines, it allows for minus minus help, but also for minus H, for minus minus version, but also for minus V, etc. Mm. There's a bug in here where uh, this application must use the C locale, not uh, locales with um, a comma as uh, uh, decimal separator. Okay. And then finally, finally, the last three ones really actually do th something, which is it uh, creates the main application and uh, it uh, does this uh, function which is from Qt which never exits which is runs the main application in the main loop and the main loop will not close until the user chooses to so alt f4 close the application from the title bar or close the application for from the task list etc so up exec this thing is in qapplication.h, which is in uh, Qt, Qt widgets, exec, this thing. Okay, I'm curious to know what's inside there. Let's see. And show displays a Q widget. Okay, let's look at what this would do. And this is the constructor, the main object in this um, Git repository, which is called Key Calculator, which depends on KXML GUI window, which uses KXML GUI. KXML GUI will um, display parts of the UI, which is common to all applications, such as a main menu bar, a help menu, a uh, what's there? common between all applications. Report bug, donate, about KD, about Kate, handbook, what's this, etc. Okay, for that you can see the tutorial on um, KXML GUI. KD develop. So it's develop.kd.org develop are you not that documentation using kd technologies and getting started with kd frameworks so it's called the kxml gui tutorial in here you find out what kxml gui is what set of ui controls it puts automatically in your application and how to extend those Okay. Next. Where were we? 
Ctrl W. So I've put two breakpoints in uh, these uh, cute methods. Let's see what they do. Cute functionalities. So start the debugger. I always keep the debugger on the first, very first line or on the entry point. I go F5. I'm deleting all breakpoints that I don't need. And now we're at uh, calc.show, so this is cute uh, widget uh, show method, F11. Cute widget.cpp. So tilde slash kd slash src slash qt5 slash qt base slash src slash widget slash kernel slash qwidget.cpp, which is the cpp file which corresponds to qwidget.h, which is this thing, not this thing. This thing. So there's the same uh, H file, include file appears in two places. One, which is placed by slash the, by make uh, install into tilde slash kd slash usr slash include. And one in the source code where I git cloned the cute uh, framework source code, which is this one. Okay, let's see what show does. So default state, whatever that is. Platform integration, there's a platform integration. And if it should be full screen, it will full screen it, after, otherwise it will maximize it, otherwise it will show it not maximized. Okay. I go shift F11 to step out and now F11 to step into app.exec. So this is qapplication.cpp, which what does it do? QGUI application exec. So what is this? A static method? I don't know. Instance return self. Q accessible set object root. K core application exec. Okay, what does this thing do? There's a uh, thread data. It makes sure that's in, on the first on the main thread. So similar to Windows applications, there's a main GUI thread. Which you must be really careful what you do with there in order not to um, make the application unresponsive. Okay, so we're on the main thread, and there's more than one event loops. Zero items. Zero event loops. Okay, so event loops is empty. So it doesn't throw the warning that the event loop is already running. It creates a new event loop. I don't know what this thing is. So okay, it's an event loop, says exec, looks at its return uh, code. And then it does the cleanup. So it runs a, uh, a event loop. 
this thing. F nine, F five, F nine, F five, F ten, and it steps in the middle of nowhere, and I can't step into where I want, which is this thing inside of Q event loop dot cpp. Okay. What else? Let me delete the second breakpoint. This thing. Delete breakpoint. Okay. And now let's look at the other files. So there's a colors.ui file which is probably settings panel. I'm guessing, I don't know. Control W. There's a constants UI file. So this file is actually a um, XML file, but can be open in Qt Creator or in Qt Designer in a uh, GUI designer. And in there we have the usual tools for GUI designers, which is a tree of which widget is in, of which control is in, which inside of which control, a properties, um, should be events or slots or something for each and every button or other control. In here it says which property is inherited from which class of, from Q object. There's object name from Q widget. So this is a push button, push button zero. So it has some uh, members from Q object, some members from Q widget, some members from Q abstract button and some members from Q push button. Okay. Fonts UI, button font, display font, history font. Again, looks like a settings pane. I'm not sure what this thing is. Precision, beep on error. I'm not sure I, I have ever seen these uh, UIs. Let's see the calculator on my system. Settings, configure kcalc. So there's a constants, colors, fonts, general. So this is the general one, general.ui. It's the settings of kcalc, the top general. So it says uh, precision, and precision is a group box. Grouping is a group box, and miskig is a group box. The miss group box has four checkboxes. The group box precision has one checkbox, two spin buttons. What, what? Let's see what the names of the controls are. So this should be spin something. Q spin box, yes. Q spin box. This is, should be checkbox something. Q checkbox, yes. This should be label something. Q label, yes. This should be group box something. Q group box, correct. Uh, Q checkbox. Uh, label. Q label. Q label. Q spin box. Spin box. Q group box. Q checkbox. Okay. Control W. There's a calc.ui, which is the main UI. I'm 
not sure how so many possibilities for the UI are represented in a single file, in a single UI file. So it could be this with and also this is a colon mod one to x. So this is uppercase mod, this is lowercase mod. And then the group of um, digits and then the right hand side shift c and plus and then hex deck oct bin okay and then a label zero 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 and then deck rad grad is hidden for now let's show it right like this so now the n column the hip column and the mon column is shown, but and A and C1 is hidden. And this shift is um, narrower. Okay. And this science mode versus statistic mode. So statistic mode also has the N column. And that's the only difference. Okay, so it's probably hiding columns out of from this UI. Okay, how does the file look like? It looks like this, it's an XML. The file can only be edited in design mode. So this is a domain specific uh, language that's understood by Qt's uh, tools. So by UIC, UI compiler, the executable, by um, the Qt uh, designer, UI designer, this thing. Qt Designer application and probably Qt Designer is embedded inside Qt Creator for uh, for this. So uh, to have a GUI designer inside the ID Qt Creator. Okay, this is the toolbox with all of the possible controls. There's an OpenGL widget. You can put uh, Qt Quick QML, this Q Quick widget. There's um, layout managers so that if you resize the UI, the application continues to look okay. Spacer, such a spacer, this is horizontal spacer, another horizontal spacer. So it's called spacer. Okay, buttons, push button, tool button, radio button, checkbox, etc. Okay. Okay, so kcalc UI, control W, there's the editor for signals and slots. We'll talk some other time about those. Control W. Kconfig compiler. Singleton mutators using them. QRC, these are the resources. So I'm guessing that this entire XML is a resource inside of the kcalc executable. And this configuration file for kconfig is also part of the executable. Okay. 
where does the where does it set the button text and uh, button um, events i don't know how do we find out so we're searching for m plus like this So M plus is uh, translated into the various languages. And we should not look into PO files. First to exclude control X, control V. Okay, not inside of docbook files. Okay, so the remaining places are inside of the UI file, so this thing is set in there. And uh, mem push button mem plus minus add to display memory m plus add display to memory so this thing is translated um, one of these two things is translated and see the first one is context or so add display to memory and m plus is translated from the po files that we see so previously and then it connects this is where it sets the events for the m plus button so the button is called pb mem plus minus and it uh, connects this button three times for switch show accels for switch mode and for button clicked okay so okay calc clicked for key calculator slot mem plus minus clicked let's look at this handles arithmetic on values stored in memory okay how do we go back okay calc button clicked This probably doesn't do much, so let's look at this string. Control Shift F, Control V. All projects, search. So it's called PB mem plus minus in the Qt designer. So in the GUI designer. And also, and also somewhere, it needs to be defined. So it's going to be defined, I'm guessing. Um, so kcalc UI will be converted to an intermediate C++ file, probably a um, H file that's going to be included into this compilation folder, this translation. Um, unit which is kcalc.cpp and this way pb mem plus minus will be de defined no it's defined in here ui kcalc.h this is it this is the intermediate file so the UI compiler UIC converts kcalc UI to UI underscore kcalc dot H. And in here it defines the button with the correct identifier. And then it sets the UI, it creates layout boxes. 
it places them in the correct order, it puts children where they should be. So this huge method is in fact the conversion of this XML file. This XML file is converted to this setup UI method. There's just one the setup UI method and the retranslate UI which is used for internationalization and then a bunch of um, member variables. And all of this is put into the intermediate class called UI underscore key calculator. Okay. So let's look. So it puts the mode shift, mode normal. So when you press the shift key, some of these buttons change. Let's see if that's true. So we shift pressed. We don't have the M plus so settings. For mode normal says add display to memory. For uh, shift mode it says subtract from memory. So 12 M plus 1 memory recall says 12. And now I want to subtract something from memory. I go 7 and shift M plus and four and memory recall. So it's 19 now. So it uh, still did. So, oh, this is the shift button. Huh. So this is the other mode, which is called mode shift and uh, is represented with this uh, ball text shift. When the push button is pressed, also it says shift in the status bar. When the but, press button, push button shift is not pressed, the toggle button or what type of button is, it says norm in the status bar, it doesn't say shift in here, and it says M plus for the M plus button. So if shift is pressed, the M plus button becomes M minus button. Okay, so that's what subtract from memory is. And if it's clicked, the slot mem plus minus clicked will be executed, which is this function. So we can go F5. And uh, put a 12 and then M plus and it breaks where it should inside of the slot mem plus minus clicked. It looks at the mode because it's important, right? If the shift mode is uh, toggled, then it needs to do M minus. Okay, so it's not in shift mode. Shift mode is false. Yes. Okay, a temporary shift mode false. If not shift mode, then it uh, does M plus. It has a thing which is called history. Uh, it does equals by default. Uh, not shift mode, so it does memory, which is zero and uh, increments it by the Thing that's displayed on the display. I'm not sure why this thing is not valid. PB shift set checked false. I don't know what this thing does. Memory indicator on the status bar. M plus status text. And then recall setting it. 
F5. So it says M in here. So the status bar set memory indicator M. Calc display set uh, status text M, this thing. And the recall is prepared. And not shift. Okay, so that was about it. I ran out of things that I know about kcalc. So again, this is the way the buttons events are um, connected to a method using the connect cute uh, thing. So connect is what? A uh, template. You see plus plus template. Okay. The other thing that I know about is uh, how I can rebuild correctly kcalc using um, kdsrc minus build. So control shift D, kdsrc minus build kcalc. I will uh, delete the directory tilde slash kd slash build utilities kcalc, this thing. And I will say, don't bother to do a git check. Don't build any other modules. So no SRC, no include dependencies. And then I want debug. And then I want make install to happen, which is refresh or what was that thing? Refresh build. Okay. And then I'm uh, using less. Okay, I'm maximizing this thing. So a ton of useless things. And the useful things start with the equivalent of uh, dot slash configure. which is starting in here. So it says power profiles list, then building kcalc from KD utils. It sets these environment variables to these values. It uh, changes into the tilde slash KD slash build slash utilities directory. In there, it runs the command uh, cmake minus b dot minus s slash kd slash src slash utility slash kcalc minus g unix make files dc make export compile commands on dc make build type debug dc make c plus plus three flags minus pipe dc make install prefix tilde slash kd slash usr and uh, i don't see the output from uh, from uh, CMake, so probably is not available when you go less, but it's available when you don't use the paginator less. Okay, and then the penultimate step is gmake minus j16, so compiling. So that means converting C code into um, object files and then linking those. Okay. It uh, takes care of localizations. It builds. And the last thing it does is gmake space install slash fast from the same directory where uh, CMake runs. So it puts in tilde slash kd slash usr the translations, the MO files the desktop file, the executable, uh, config file, um, update, bunch of translations, and that's it. So if you run with kdsrc-build 
and build something successfully and you want to know exactly what environment variables are set and one command lines are run this is the uh, way to do it so you look at uh, when it says queuing uh, environment variable to be set to you copy these things so this would be for cmake control c oh not control c but control shift c control shift c you put it in a kate control v and then you replace all of this so config path this thing equals that if you're using bash then you make this thing be valid bash command lines so to be set to this thing sh should become equals okay this thing doesn't do anything queuing should disappear control r replace 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 okay to be set to control r tab equals replace 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 not repenting these things not needed control x okay then there's a this cd important and then there's this command line and without this so this is the way you configure correctly a uh, uh, kd git repository the exact same way that kdsrc minus build would configure it And then for uh, the make step, then there's similar things, which is uh, this. Oh, where are you? Control Shift C. Setting environment variable. This needs to become nothing. Okay, running this thing becomes like this okay this disappears and this two becomes equals okay so this is the make step this is the dot slash configure step and then there's another step which is make install fast which is of this part control shift c control v this is important control x setting environment variable this becomes nothing control r replace without with this control R space place replace replace to where are you to control R equals place okay and the last thing is G make make install fast so using this script file you're going to be able to build kcalc the exact same way from the command line that uh, kdsrc minus build would eventually you will need to delete the build directory first okay so this is the script that i would uh, run in order to build kcalc exactly the same way that, KCalc, that uh, kdsrc minus build does so this was all that i know about how to program for uh, 
the KD calculator called kcalc. So all that I know about the kcalc git repository and KD uh, project. Thank you.